This one, you can see I have a, a, a straightforward click event in, in XAML that I'm looking for. Okay, you can see up on the top there, I can actually uh, see on my simulator what that, what that clicks, that button's going to look like. I can actually move it around if I want uh, and just drag and drop and so on and so forth. So, uh, very, very simple UI. And it updates, as you see, it can update the code at the middle here. So, what I'm going to do, that's the same. I also actually have an image underneath. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to go to this event and show you what the code is under here. Okay, so here's the, here's the code as before. And up at the top here, it's again very similar. Okay, but now I'm using C sharp. So we see a C sharp type format. Okay, for the command. Using the same UI, uh, the same UI concepts though, and the same RT calls. So we here have exactly the same. We have a pop up, we have a message dialog. I've actually asked, do you want to open a file rather than. Uh, just put up hello world, gives you an idea, uh, but it, it looks exactly the same as, the, um, as the, the C++ case. And you can see under here, you know, I have, again, an asynchronous call to do the display. Again, asynchronous support in all three languages, very, very important. The reason we're doing that is to make sure that we maximize the battery life and we get the best performance out of the applications so they don't hang the machine all the time. Okay. Now, actually, all I'm doing, going on from that, when you see yes under here, all I'm doing is I'm using some of the RT controls, in, in particular these things called pickers, which allow me to use uh, the file system, for instance. So I can go out and I can use the file system, and I can access the file system and pull back images from my file system if I, uh, if I want to do so. And then finally, the last piece of code down there at the bottom uh, actually then just goes and puts that up, that up on the, in the application itself. Okay, so let's just go and run this and go through it. And basically what this application does allows me to go and pick up a, a picture uh, and then uh, display it up on the screen uh, as part of the application. Okay, the application fires up in metro mode, switches into RT. This isn't a very powerful machine, so I apologize for, for the performance. Comes up with a click me button again. I click on it and now rather than hello world, it says, do you want to open a file? I say yes. It now flips across into my file system. And this is actually uh, my, this is the metro front end of my file system. This is just my pictures. So I'll take a picture of, uh, of me in India. And I open that. Okay. It goes and picks that up and puts it up in my application. So what I want you to take away is how simple that is to do. You also notice, by the way, that I have a, an open async for the file, opening the file as well down here. So what I've shown there is, again, how easy it is to use um, WinRT from C Sharp. Um, I've shown how much additional flexibility we're providing as part of the controls, controls that are in RT. So you can go and build something which accesses the file system very simply, all those sort of areas. So, um, and then finally, how we provided some of the things uh, to, to provide asynchronous and, and high performance support. Interestingly enough, uh, this actually does run on top, of it, on top of .NET. And if you go up here and have a look, you'll see this is actually using some of the .NET libraries. This is .NET 4.5 as it happens. But the way we call that is in, in a native manner. So we get the maximum amount of performance. And I'll talk in a little bit more detail about how this is all connected together underneath. If you want. So this is how it actually is connected together. And uh, you can see that we have these things we call projections. So you have your languages over on the left-hand side there, and you can write in C++ and C Sharp and HTML. And what we do is we have a, a, a very thin layer, this projection layer, which takes all the information that you need. Obviously, for C++, it's at uh, compile time. For C Sharp, it's sort of compile interpret time, and then in the, visual, uh, uh, in the JavaScript case, it's at runtime, interpretive time. And we pull that information together. We actually store it in this additional file, this Windows metadata file. 
Okay, and this Windows metadata file keeps the information, all the information that's required about these particular applications, and that is actually then propagated back up into your, both into the store, so it's then loaded down as part of the application load, and it's also propagated into your live ID when you've actually loaded up an application, which allows us to do roaming. So I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. Then all three of those things then go and actually call in to the runtime objects, the WinRT runtime objects, and those runtime objects are clearly objects that we've built normally, but they can actually be objects you built yourself. So for instance, you could build a C++ object that's running, or component that's running, um, and actually then go and call that from, uh, from JavaScript. And the projections will do all the connections that you need, and actually make individual applications run it in, a native, in a native type mode, uh, and give you native type performance, but take care of all the additional information, additional things you need. So that's roughly how uh, WinRT ties together and what conceptual model it provides you for connecting uh, your, your languages together and building your applications.